Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I am going to be trying a full face of new makeup. I recently did a haul. I also got a little bit of PR. So I'm going to use those products in this video just to kind of update you on my thoughts so you can see what I think of them, what worked for me, what didn't. And yeah, so I have a lot of products. The look is pretty simple, but I still feel like I got a pretty good feel of the products that I tried out. So if you are interested in seeing that, then just keep watching. I have a lot of new products that I have not tried sitting in front of me. I'm so excited to play. So the first thing that we're going to try out is a new primer from Good Molecules. This came out a few weeks ago and this is the Silicone Free Priming Moisturizer. It is winter, so I know we all have super dry skin, so this is perfect. I mean, I put it on my Instagram story that I had received it. They said this is supposed to be great with or without makeup. Of course, I'm using it with makeup today, but it looks like this. Good Molecules is really awesome because it feels like it's a high-end brand, but it actually is quite affordable. You can get it off of Beautylish. I really need to like fully test out their skincare, but this is what it looks like. It just squeezes out my skin has been so dry and thirsty, so this is perfect. Oh, and it feels really nice. It's like not a super slippery moisturizer, but it still has a little bit of slip to it. Feels like there's a little bit of tackiness sitting on the skin from it. I just switched over to a La Mer moisturizer, and I don't think my skin is agreeing to it because I haven't had a breakout in a long time, so just excuse that. No, but this feels very, very nice on the skin. It feels like makeup's going to lay well over it, so if you are interested in good molecules, this feels like a good one for dry skin. So, for foundation, I'm going to play with the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer. I ordered this during Black Friday when ColourPop was 30% off, so there are a lot of ColourPop items I want to try. But this one I'm super excited about. I got two colors because I was not sure. I've heard many good things about this. I heard it was great for dry skin. The color that I wanted, of course, was out of stock. So we're going to try Light 7W, and if that doesn't work, I have Medium 9W. I don't have a warm undertone. I prefer a warm undertone in a foundation compared to like a cool undertone where it makes me look pink. Huh, this actually looks like it's not a horrible color. And as you can see, just from spreading it out, it is pretty light coverage. We're gonna mix a little bit of 9W. Color match is gonna be forgiving in this, I think, because there's not an exceptional amount of coverage here. My favorite way to apply any type of foundation is to use my fingers to kind of spread it out just to get that product on there. And this is like sinking into my skin. Very interesting. I feel like when I saw other people use this, they got way more coverage than me. So, I mean, this is actually a foundation that I would like for every day. I'm not afraid of light coverage. I love tinted moisturizers, but for some reason I was expecting a little bit more coverage just from the reviews I've seen online. We're gonna work on covering these areas of my skin that hate me right now and are very angry. And I do have acne scars and freckles that could be covered. Before you comment on this giant sponge, it is a Real Techniques face and body sponge. I just, I really like that it's so big and covers half my face. And I'm gonna do just a tiny bit more. I've kind of put a lot on, so I'm gonna stop here. So yeah, this is definitely a super light coverage, everyday kind of coverage, which I'm okay with. This is like the type of product I would wear to work. I think I still like my Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer better, just because I feel like it applied kind of patchy. Like some areas seem to be more covered than others. So hopefully this concealer will help. So I have the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Concealer. So this goes along with the foundation. I got mine in medium 85N. So hopefully this will kind of make up for the lack of coverage. And I'm not into super brightening concealers. I kind of like them if they're my skin color. So interested to see if this makes up for the lack of coverage of the tinted moisturizer. Oh, this looks very nice. Yeah, so that added like, I wouldn't say a super amount of coverage, but it really kind of brightened up my face. So I'm just gonna apply some kind of in the areas of my face that could use just 
a little bit more coverage. So I really like these two products together. This kind of evens everything and then you can use the concealer just to kind of put a little bit extra coverage where you need it. It's a very light concealer. It does feel quite moisturizing. So I'm gonna do my brows really quickly because I don't have a new brow product and I will be right back. We're gonna move on to eyes and you guys seemed super interested in the Laura Mercier palettes that I picked up. So we're going to play with those. So I have put down my MAC Painterly paint pot and we're gonna use a mixture of colors from the Fine Art eyeshadow palette because as you can see, there's not many like matte colors or anything like that in this one. And then this one is the Full Canvas Eye and Cheek Essentials. So we will be digging into this for like the face products as well but this one has a little bit more variety in the shadows so that you can add depth and whatnot but they do look super similar are these the same colors yeah i think some of the colors in here are the same if not will probably look the same on the eye so i wouldn't say that you need both but clearly i didn't do my research for brushes, I have a lot of blinged brushes that I want to play with. I think I'm going to stick to the Starry Nights collection brushes. These are the ones with the beautiful black jewels on them. This is currently sold out on their website, but it will be restocked in February. So I'm going to stick to this collection. These feel super nice. Like the jewels on them are really on there. I don't think they're going to fall off. And they are synthetic brushes. I do love natural hair brushes, but I know a lot of you guys don't use natural hair brushes. So these are really good. Also have like their regular line where it's these beautiful brushes but we're gonna stick with the starry nights and i mean they're just like the most beautiful brushes ever for my all over transition color we're taking the e12 brush and then we're gonna go with this shade right here so that deposited lots of color very nice and these brushes are really soft i was a little bit worried when i saw photos of them online but now that i have them in my hand like they're super soft nice synthetic bristles and i'm impressed with that shade i feel like it deposited a lot of color and it's working out pretty easily as well where are these palettes made this one's made in the usa that's really fantastic because you know sometimes for holiday collections a lot of times brands will go to china which is fine but their regular line stuff isn't made in china so normally that's like means it's a price cut to make it but this one was still made in the USA. Then we're gonna add just a touch of depth with this shade right here. That deposited a lot of color. Seems to be working out pretty well. I just wanna add a touch of depth finishing because I really wanna play with the sparkly formula that's in here. We're gonna grab it from the Fine Art palette though. So let's play, I really wanna use this one. We're gonna use this one. So it doesn't feel like there's a lot of color being deposited yeah so this is mostly like the finish more than anything so you probably want to have like a base color underneath definitely use your finger so i don't know if you can see that but it's honestly just sparkle which i don't think is a bad thing but if all of the shades are like this that's just too much of a lid topper formula so we're going to dig into this one then so this one has a little bit more of a base color but it's still is all about that sparkle. I think this is super pretty for a New Year's look kind of thing. Just from swatching it, I wouldn't say that all of the colors have this amazing pigmentation. I don't know if you can see that, but the colors are quite soft and these are the ones that aren't the super glittery formula, but there are quite a large amount of them that are that kind of lid topper that I have on my eyelid. So the palette is really pretty. I like the simple kind of sparkly eye look that I have, but it is difficult to create a whole look just using this palette. This is something you would have to kind of dig into just for when you want a lid look and you get a really pretty sparkly look. But I feel like too many of these are just like the glitter and the ones that are more pigmented aren't the best. So I'm not overly impressed with this to be honest. 
and just from kind of taking a look at the eye stuff here I think this one is better because you have more variety and those mattes did blend out beautifully but if you aren't a fan of those lid topper kind of formulas where there's not much of a base to it and once you put it on the eye they kind of look the same then maybe this isn't for you but I think this full one is much better you get much more texture and more different kind of looks with this one so I'm gonna quickly take the E15 I'm gonna take the matte color and just quickly run it along my lower lash line obviously I didn't do a super crazy look today i just kind of wanted to get a feel for the formula of the product i'm gonna swatch a couple of colors from the full canvas palette Ooh, that's really pretty yeah i mean definitely not the most amazing formulation in the world but you can definitely make it work and if you like softer looks you might actually like that you might like the fact that you have all of this so to bronze my face i actually don't have a product that i have not yet used so we're going to dig into the contour palette from scott barnes that i've been working on and i'm gonna take the blinged brushes f11 brush and i just want a very slight bronze i don't care too much for a contour but we're gonna take a little bit of chiseled up here very pigmented must use a light hand i did not set my tinted moisturizer and it's kind of showing with how this bronzer supplies it is a little bit deep so like the tinted moisturizer definitely leaves a tack so i would say set your face don't make the mistake that I just made because it is making this product look just a little bit patchy. In case this does happen to you, all you need to do is take the sponge that you use and kind of press over the bronzer and that will fix everything. That will kind of push it in, get rid of the patchiness because I didn't want too much of a bronze anyways. I just wanted some color there. For blush, we're going to go back into the Full Canvas Eye and Cheek Essential Palette. And this comes with three highlighters right here. Obviously, this one I don't think will work too well for me. And this blush. So we're taking the F14 brush. Not too much kickback. I used a very light hand and whew, okay, definitely picks up more color than it looks. I don't know if this is the best blush formula in the world. I know my uh, tinted moisturizer is causing the product to stick, but there's so many blush formulas that I know wouldn't have this problem. This is a very pretty blush for medium skin tones because I did use a pretty light hand, but I think this is kind of just a normal blush formula. I don't notice anything too fantastic about it. And again, I'm going to go back use my sponge i don't know how people don't use sponge to apply their like foundation and stuff because it just it comes in handy at every opportunity so that's much better so for highlighting the face i finally have the opportunity to play with my jacqueline cosmetics stuff i have not yet used that so we're gonna start off with the luminous powder which is something i probably should have used earlier to kind of set my face more but i have mine in the shade carrots i'm gonna use the f15 brush to apply it because it's small so i feel like it's going to allow me to put it in direct areas and it's like more flimsy for this loose powder so i'm not overpacking. So I'm going to get a little bit of that. Oh yeah, so that definitely adds a luminous dust. If you really like a glowy, luminous kind of look to your face, you could put this all over. I think for me, it is a bit shiny. Like I put it right here and I can definitely see my pores now. It actually is super pretty. It adds a really nice luminous dusting that almost comes across sweaty but i know some people like that look for me personally i would use this very sparingly in certain areas but if you love that super luminous look you don't have too much texture or pores this is awesome i think if i was wearing a more full coverage foundation that is when this would come into play more i would say just because my pores are more visible and so is like my redness and stuff like that just because of the tinted moisturizer this isn't a very good pairing but if i had like a full coverage foundation on this would be so beautiful to like bring some life 
back into my face so I actually really do like it it's just not the best for what foundation I have on right now and then I do have the flash highlighter palette and I've been dying to try this so packaging is super luxurious on this and I mean this is like made in Italy Italy is known for making highlighter formulas like this so I kind of know it's gonna be amazing we're taking the f17 brush we're gonna try iced first I know this is gonna be good now that is super icy, blending out beautifully. I almost wish that was a little less bright because I'm scared of super beaming highlighters, but that's kind of her thing. Gleam right here is much, much brighter, so I can only imagine. Taking a little bit of sparks. Okay, so super beaming highlighter, really a beautiful formula. It's blending into the skin really, really nicely. Yeah, I mean, this is a good highlighter palette. I can already tell. Actually, I think though I'm more impressed by this luminous powder. This is going to be so useful with heavier foundations. I just don't like it with this foundation, but this highlighter super pretty too. I think this is kind of like the epitome of Jaclyn. Like this is her. I can totally tell and formula feels super nice. I will obviously need to play with that more, but love that. And then the third formula that we have is the loose highlighter. And this is totally mm, out of my comfort zone. I'm not into super duper bright beaming highlights, but I had to pick it up. This is bomb and I'm just going to apply just a little bit in my inner corner. So this is the 16 brush. I'm just gonna take a little bit from the cap. I mean, yeah, on the cheek, this is going to be super bright and beaming. I would probably only use this for like nights out and stuff, not for every day. Um, I'll have to play with this formula more, of course, but as expected, it is super bright and beaming. It does seem to be quite finely milled. I don't notice anything wrong with it yet. And just to continue kind of figuring this guy out, we're gonna take this color put it somewhere. So I'm gonna go off camera, do some liner and lashes, and then we'll be back to play with some lip products. So I went back from the Laura Mercier palette and I used the black shadow as liner. I've been loving using black eyeshadow as liner just, or even brown shadow, just because it is so much more soft, where it adds a definition, but it's not super harsh. So now let's move on to lips. I got a package from Kaleidos and I got their new lip collection. I'm gonna insert a picture of the packaging because it's just incredible. We're gonna play with the lip tonic. And so the color that I have is Infusion and I think this is kind of like a blotted lip kind of thing. This is like relatively close to my natural lip color. This is such a good everyday color. It's not too opaque to wear like you need to be wearing a full face of makeup with it and with this color in particular you can kind of use your finger to blot it out super comfortable this is a really nice color okay by the way kaleidos is an indie brand right now i think they're gonna be huge because they have such a cool concept behind their brand their packaging is incredible like i am so lucky to have had this brand find me because they are amazing but this feels really comfortable and i really really like the color. Now we're going to put one of their glosses on top. This is the Lucid Lip is what they call these and this one is in Fantasize. It's like this really pretty kind of sparkly pink. Ooh. You can see the glitters. That really looks good with the eyes. And they have like a couple. They have this color and then this really cool blue glittery one. And that feels really nice. It's not sticky but it does have some thickness to it really good formula. Kaleidos has very, very nice formulas. Really love that lip color I put on. I feel like it's a great everyday lip color and I'm not too disappointed by the gloss at all. So I mean, this is the look. It's a pretty simple look, but I do feel like I got the opportunity to play with a lot of different products. So let's take a moment to go over them. So the first product that I used today was the Good Molecules Silicone Free Priming Moisturizer. I really liked how this felt on my skin. I feel like if you have normal to dry skin, this is going to feel really good. Uh, it had the perfect amount of 
smoothness onto the skin but it also had the perfect amount of tackiness so that foundation would stick to it so I definitely feel like this is going to be good with or without makeup so far I'm really enjoying this the pretty fresh tinted moisturizers from ColourPop I think they are nice I don't think for the type of look I was going for today it was exactly fitting because it is super light coverage but that is great for every day I will have to leave a note down below for how these wear for you but I thought they were really pretty on the skin. I'm not overly impressed. I still think I like my Laura Mercier better, but we will see how this wears. I think these are okay. I do quite like the pretty fresh hyaluronic creamy concealer though. I do think this pairs very nicely with the tinted moisturizer because it does add the coverage that the tinted moisturizer couldn't give you. It feels really light underneath the eyes so i am actually quite into the concealer i think it's nice again i will need to see how it wears throughout the day as far as the brushes go the blinged brushes starry nights brush collection this isn't all of them in the collection these are just the ones that i use i really like these i think they are a great option if you are a synthetic brush user they washed very well the bristles didn't fall off or anything they feel well made and they did a good job distributing the product on my face and I mean they are so stunning like these are hand jeweled I just go take a look at their website their brushes are beautiful and I just love this collection I feel like it's perfect for winter the Laura Mercier palettes <laughs> So the Fine Art Eyeshadow Palette, I'm not really in love with, I'm not gonna lie. I like the glitter finishes because I am a glitter fan. I like the colors on my eyelid, so it's not that it can't create a pretty look. I just think quality-wise, it's not really the best, probably not worth your money. The overall aesthetic of the palette is really pretty. It's pretty to look at. It's pretty to own. If you are looking for a palette that is really worth it, I would be lying to you to say that this is because it's not. It's like an okay palette, not impressed with the quality. And I do like the full canvas eye and cheek palette better. Now what I didn't mention is I hate this packaging because there is a mirror but it's not detachable. It's like not attached at all. If you put it in wrong, a corner can stab the product. So I'm gonna leave the mirror out and actually just leave the plastic sheet so that that doesn't happen. I think the eyeshadow selection in this palette is better than the Fine Art palette. Uh, lots of similar colors between the two, so I would personally just recommend you go for this. You got a little bit more variety in the formulas here, so I do think this is better, but again, I'm not overly impressed with the formula here. It's okay. I will keep this palette. I will continue to use it. And the shadows weren't bad. I'm just not overly impressed. Same thing down here. I haven't really played too much with the highlighters, but I'm just not that impressed. I think it's an okay palette. I think that you're getting a lot in one, so this is going to be good for travel, but it's not knocking my socks off. And then finally, the Jaclyn Cosmetics products that I used. I really like them. I'm most impressed with the Luminous Powder. I think this is better for full coverage matte kind of foundation. This is going to bring life back into your face. I think just for a tinted moisturizer, it was a little bit much. I'm really excited to try this with like crazy full coverage makeup. I think this is going to make the most pretty effect on the face. The Highlight Palette, again, is really nice. This is a formula that I am very familiar with, so I already knew kind of right away I was going to like it. It's not a super unique formula. Like Becca has similar formulas formula to it, but it's really nice. It's very luxurious. If you are into Jaclyn and want to support her, you're going to like this. It's nice. And then the loose highlighter. I'm just not into products like this in general, so this doesn't do it for me, but it does feel very nice. It does feel like it's milled very fine, and again, if it's a product you're interested in, I think you're gonna like it. And then finally, these Kaleidos lip products. Just keep in mind the lip tonics, they aren't like super pigmented liquid lipsticks, which honestly I kind of like. It's more like daytime friendly, and then the lip glosses feel really nice as well, and I think it's great to support indie brands and they're like a really neat brand you should really jump on the bandwagon because they create some really fun stuff so i'm very excited to continue playing with these lip products and that's all i have for today's video just trying out some of my new makeup let me know what has caught your eye really curious if you've tried these laura mercier products what you think because i think in this video these are probably the most disappointing for me and they're not bad like i like my eye look but just not impressed. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel, I sure do hope you guys take the time to do so. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.